So here I am in Heiomwai. Weather is variable at the moment. It was quite nice five minutes ago. Just sold a load of books at the cinema bookshop. And I think I'm gonna have a coffee and then have a little tootle around and see if we can pick anything up. We'll see. diary it's been a while since i've done one of these and i think this is episode 19 or 20 it'll say on the screen but we're more or less at 20 now i think aren't we and really what i'm going to do this time is i'm going to talk about collecting over the course of a week so there'll be several segments as usual so this will be like a collecting week so maybe it'll appear next weekend it's um saturday morning and last night i launched the top five um, Dying Earth Science Fantasy series video, which a lot of you have liked, which is great. Thanks for that. And so we'll begin with something relevant to that in a tangential way. Here's some things from Dorset Bob, some upgrades, some replacements, and just some sort of spares and things, really, because this is an upgrade thing. This is some stuff I got from Bob um, through the post. And first of all, Gene Wolf, Endangered Species. These are all A-format paperbacks. This is in Tor. And this, of course, is a collection of short stories, a nice chunky one, and very, very handsome. Lovely, really, really nice. And I am going to do more Wolf on the channel. We'll see when that will be. I will probably do some more about the more obscure novels before I do Book of the New Sun, because everybody does Book of the New Sun. But yeah, that goes in the collection, really nice. The next one is a book I used to have. I used to have a hardcover signed first and I got rid of it. I don't know why, probably space. And I've been thinking a lot recently about Brian Aldiss and this is a, a Too Full of Too Far and other stories. So this is a um, mid 90s, let me see. Um, let's have a look. Grafton, Granada, paperbacks, a science fiction and fantasy down there. It doesn't say, what were they calling themselves by that point? Um, they're just called Harper Collins. And short story collection, very different cover to um, to the hardcover, but nice to have that back in the collection. So I've been thinking about Brian a lot recently, and of course I did the Repulsive Aliens <laughs> video a while ago. And I really like Brian, I want to do some more rereading of his work. Now on to something which I've never read, and I stopped reading Bradbury really in the late 80s. I got as far as the Toynbee Convector and then his two crime novels, which didn't really do it for me. They were beautifully written, but I sort of felt that he'd stalled in the 1950s really and this was a book he wrote about spending time in Ireland writing the screenplay for John Houston's version of Moby Dick so it is a novel but it is about that process and this is a beautiful Bantam USA A format of Green Shadows White Whale isn't that absolutely lovely looks like a James Herriot book and I've never read this and um, you know it is something which I wish really get under my belt there was a really beautiful UK hardcover which you never see in good nick I should pick one up at one point but in the meantime lovely it'll be interesting to go to that to read a late Bradbury I haven't read I've got a few late ones I haven't read I've got one or two I have read and they're not so good I have to say but that one I've always loved that title so the title I love when I was about 14 very lyrical typical Bradbury. Then um, Ursula Le Guin, or oh, I'm going to start calling her Le Guin again because I like calling her that just to be perverse and I'm Welsh and I can get away with it. But this is one that again I never picked up in hardcover. Used to be easy to find and now it's quite difficult, get quite expensive and I tend not to go for the later works in hardcover. So this is a American rock paperback and rock of course were affiliated to Penguin in the UK and this is Buff Buffalo Gals and other animal presences with a little fox and a bison and a wolf on there real cutesy stuff i think you'll agree really nice yeah and as you see the dorset bob standard is just always amazing it really is isn't it i've talked a bit on the channel about um women's press sf in the 80s um on and off uh, for months really probably for about a year or so and recently i did the octavia butler video which I showed the UK first and uh, Joanna Russ is somebody who will be a lot about on SF booktube these days and this is one that I didn't have in my collection remember it really well I love this cover 
This cover reminds me of The Handmaid's Tale, but I much prefer the rest to Atwood any day. And this is a short story collection and this is Extraordinary People. I like the use of the brackets there. Very, very cool. Extra people, extraordinary people. And the austere livery of women's press of their hardcore feminism is quite bracing. I think you'll agree with that. Lovely stuff. Then um, the second tranche of this sort of mini haul really is looking at some authors who for me are really key and um, would be the, none of them would be a surprise to you. So they are sort of replacements, upgrades, adjuncts, call them what you will. This is an important one. This is a book I used to have and I've got in an omnibus edition. I used to have this edition and I let it go and I wish I hadn't. And this is actually the world first edition of Michael Moorcock's The Steel Czar. Um, here in Mayflower Science Fantasy, um, Granada, and fundamentally that's the third and final volume in the Oswald Bastable Nomad of the Time Streams, Nomad of Time. Different omnibuses call it different things. This is the third volume. There was no hardcover of this in the UK, so this was the world first, uh, first printing, and uh, really, really good. And that's a cracking cover art there from Melvin, who was very big on these masked figures with weapons. And <laughs> that was his thing. And I'm really pleased to have that because I do have first editions of the others. The first one was a harder hardcover and it's like a little um, octavo. The second one is a demi from Quartet. Um, this one, as I say, is a Mayflower Granada. So they're all different publishers. So, you know, you, you don't get a uniform set, which is where the omnibus is handy. I need to look at the early 90s omnibus I've got. And it, unless that's revised, I'm going to move that on for space reasons. And I've never liked the cover. Um, but I really like these books. I think they're underrated. So here are the three first editions. Here's Warlord of the Air, which is N.E.L. Hodder and Stoughton. And as you can see, that's a little octavo. Uh, not a book you see very often. It's possible the door one might have preceded, but I'm, when I say first edition, I'm talking about a hardcover. Um, this is the quartet, first edition of The Land Leviathan, the second book in the sequence. And these are kind of proto-steampunk in lots of ways as well. It's really nice to see a quartet hardback. Because of course what Moorcock would do, he would do singleton deals with these things rather than you know, whole series and um, there was quite a gap in the second and third and there's the Steel Czar and you know it's quite a good thing for a jobbing author to keep you know several publishers on the go and I was talking to a writer the other day and she was telling me that there's a lot more one-off deals there which I think is quite a healthy thing really so that's the three firsts mismatched of the Nomad of the Time Streams series. Then something which I've never owned um, I've only ever seen I think, I think I've only ever seen two copies, and this is a book which is really, really hard to find in the wild. Um, hard to find per se. And the weird thing about it is, is the hardcover is actually a lot more common. I see the hardcover, you know, with varying degrees of frequency, and it's a Keith Roberts book, and the hardcover I spot it everywhere. I've had one for decades and decades. You never ever see a mint one. I've never seen a mint one. I've never seen one I would describe as very fine. But this is the paperback which is even scarcer. And this is The Boat of Fate by Keith Roberts. His historical novel, his Roman historical novel, and that's in Coronet, mid-70s. And Coronet, of course, was one of the two major imprints of Hodder and Stout. And the other one was NEL, New English Library. And this is the um, original edition I read and I borrowed it from somebody. I would have borrowed it either from, I think, maybe Graham, but more likely Ben Stavely Taylor of Kerosina Books. And this is an absolutely gorgeous copy. And I love that illustration. It's a very moody book. I want to reread it because I've not read it for years. And it really showed that Keith was capable of going way beyond his usual thing. And I once recommended this to Ben Kane who's an author who specialises in Roman military historical fiction, and he was blown away by it. He thinks it's amazing, and really it should be in print. It's a real sort of classic. I think there's a Cosmos Wildside USA reprint, but I think you'd agree that's absolutely gorgeous. Really, really nice. I'm really pleased to have that. Because, as I say, you never see it, you know, and it's rarer than the hardcover, if you can believe it. One I used to have, and I let go, and I've reacquired it, Never read it. I've heard from a close friend of mine that it's fairly minor. It's a later Silverberg, and that's Roma Returner. This is um, a Golanx paperback. This is from, let's see, I think this is the early part of this century. Um, let's have a look. 
2003 in hardcover. It was terrible in hardcover. And this was a series that he fixed up, alternate history about the Roman Empire continuing to the present day. Um, I am looking forward to reading it as I never got round to it. Um, I've never been so interested in Silverberg once you get to the 80s, but there are some things I want to get covered under my belt. But really, really nice. And, you know, as new, you can't argue with that. This is the Dorset Bob standard, which fits perfectly with the Outlaw Bookseller standard, as you know. Now an indulgence, um, a absolutely beautiful pan lozenge of a relatively uncommon book. I still have my original, which I bought way back in about 1983. It was signed by the author. And I saw this, um, this copy at Bob's and I thought I have to have this because it's one of my favourite books and has my favourite book book jacket ever. Uh, I've never liked any cover more than I've liked this and this is Christopher Priest, A Dream of Wessex. Absolutely fantastic and I never forget the first time I saw this book at the Arts Council bookshop Oriel in Charles Street in Cardiff in the early 80s and I thought I don't know what that is but I've got to have it. Fantastic and of course he became my favourite living author and passed away earlier this year as you know. I think that is just really stunning, stunning condition, super. I'm going to finish this little trash with um, an upgrade. This is an upgrade because I sold my original copy on in the recent little sales video I did. Thanks to everybody who bought from that. Um, that helped me clear some things out. Some things went to good homes. Really, really handy. And I'm off to Hay on Y in a couple of days to shift a lot of the rest. There's some gone on eBay. There's more going on eBay. But there's a lot of stuff which is just going to go to Hay to help me have a clear out. So I might shoot a bit in Hay. We'll see. I might not. And really, this um, is something which I read when it was first published. I've got a hardcover, which has a different title. The title of the hardcover is The Secret Ascension. That's the American hardcover. This is the UK Grafton first and only printing. 3 99 from the late 80s. And this is Michael Bishop's Philip K. Dick is Dead, Alas. Fantastic. Because Michael Bishop died a while ago as well. Great shame. This is a wonderful novel about Philip K. Dick in an alternate world where Richard Nixon has become president four times. He's won the Vietnam War. And it's a bit like the man in the high castle. And Dick is almost like the Hawthorne Abdenson character. He's known as a mainstream novelist rather than as an SF writer. His SF novels circulate in Sam is that because they're politically suspect. And he supposedly is dead, but he's not. And this is a great book. If you can ever pick it up, do. And mine had a terribly faded spine. This is unfaded and as new. So I'm delighted with that. So that concludes this part of Collector Diary. And I think the next bit will probably be in Hay on White. Some gap filling looking at PS Publishing, the wonderful UK small press that's been running for gosh, it's like over over 25 years now, and they do great stuff. They don't do so much SF these days, they do a lot more horror. They did lots of SF in the 90s and the early part of the century, and I really like their books. And their usual thing was to do a signed limited edition in a small run and a unsigned trade edition. So that was the usual standard. And these are the first two books in the Telemass Quartet by Eric Brown, who I've had a bit of a thing for recently since he died. And I always enjoy his books. They're quite light and not too challenging. They're great comfort reads, but he had good facility as a storyteller. It's a great shame he's gone because he was only about 60, which is terrible. And the uh, these are the first two, as I say. Fama de Hana on Fommel Hoot 4, which is the first in the sequence, and followed by Sacrifice on Spicker 3. So as you see, number 4 is the first, number 3 is the second, just to confuse you. And these are nice little novellas, and the basic idea of these is that they're set in a future where mankind has worked out how to travel to other planets using matter transference with a machine called the Telemat. And basically the idea is that it's a narrative of a chap whose daughter is kidnapped by his wife, whom he's estranged from. And she goes off with this strange guy to another planet. And he follows her from one planet to another, looking for his daughter to save his young daughter from the machinations of his estranged wife and her bizarre partner. 
before something can go awry and he visits all these different alien worlds so there's a lot of sort of planetary sort of romance and world building which is nice and they're very easy reads and great characterization and i read them one christmas a few years ago when it was like really busy at work so you come home and you just want something light i did that with the murder bot books as well which again are very easy reads so these are ideal for that sort of situation so these are things i've had for a while and those are the first two these are the third and fourth in the sequence reunion on alpha reticuli 2 and exalted on bellatrix 1 and great jackets as you see and very very pretty and the thing about ps is the production values are really high they do these strange formats so they are weird formats it's slightly wider they're kind of demi size but they're wider and i'm not entirely happy with that but i've got used to it over the years very very nice indeed and what they have underneath the jackets very often is they have laminated boards if i just pop the jacket of this one off so you can see really really nice so you get the artwork without the legend on it without the title on it you see these little frog guys there who are crazy and yeah really beautiful stuff and i really recommend these they're a great read and they're a quartet telemus quartet there are four of them but they were succeeded by a very short fifth volume telemas coda of course coda means the end of a piece of music and you'll notice it's a term i use for the closing off of a sequence and i'm reading this at the moment i didn't have this one so this is a recent acquisition and this is literally about 30 pages long and what it does it basically recapitulates the themes we should say or rather retells the story in brief as the central character talks to his daughter now that she's grown up but what happens and they take Telemas journey to each of the planets very briefly so the reader gets to revisit them and it's great fun to read and I'm reading that at the moment and it's literally about 30 pages long very very short so I'll just flip the jacket off nice end papers and there you go there's the book without the legend on the artwork on the laminated boards so yeah so those are really nice to have it's nice to finish off the sequence with that i've also managed to complete my run of another eric brown quintet the starship series and i have shown this before this is starship summer from ps and this is the signed numbered limited edition which comes in the slip case and that's the slip there and i've had this for quite some time and i think this has got a really really beautiful jacket introduction by peter f hamilton this is one of the signed ones as i say so that one just has plain boards but if we pop it open and have a look inside we'll see somewhere in here if we can find the limitation page there you go Eric Brown's signature at the top and Peter F. Hamilton's and let's see limited to 26 lettered slipcase hardcovers and 2,000 jacketed hardcovers signed by Brown and Hamilton and 500 trade hardcovers signed by Eric Brown so every copy of this book is signed there's just three variants and as you see it says this is copy lifetime number five so this belonged to somebody who had what you call a lifetime subscription they pay a certain amount of money and you get every single PS book so it's a special one and it's it's sort of handwritten that way so I managed to get that some time ago it's not a cheap book to get these days but it is very beautiful I've not actually I've read some of this one I've not read the rest of the sequence so I must get around to it but I want to show you how I've managed to complete the sequence now this is where something interesting happens because this is Starship Fall the second in the sequence so it goes summer fall winter spring as you'd expect and fall of course is the American term for autumn we say autumn in the UK fall of course is literal because of course the leaves fall and what's interesting about this is that this is not a PS book this was published by Newcon um, another small press this hasn't been going quite as long run by Ian Waits the SF writer and Newcon have done some great stuff as well and for some reason, I'm not sure why, this went to Newcon instead of PS. And the this production value of Newcon is slightly lower. They are effectively print on demand. Um, there's Eric there. But they are very nice and they've done some great stuff, actually. I would say look at their website. If you want to keep up what's happening on the edges of things, really, really good. So that's Starship 4. Next to that, and this is someone I've acquired recently, is Starship Winter and what I did there was a chap he had all of them in one lot and it came to quite a bit and I made him an offer for the three I didn't have so I had summer and fall but I didn't have winter spring and coda 
So he immediately responded. I've done this a few times. A lot of um, sellers are loath to do it, but you know, I could have bought them as a lot, but I'd have to sell, sold the other ones on. It was more money and often people want to do a deal. So that was great. So this is Starship Winter. Look at that jacket. Isn't that fantastic? With a ring system. And yeah, that one's got um, laminated boards picture. And this is PS. So PS are doing laminated boards underneath as well at this point. So I'm looking forward to reading these. Absolutely lovely. And as you see, they're very brief and short. But I do like a good novella. I've read a few novellas this week, actually. And I'm very back into that form at the moment. So that's Starship Winter. I'll just show you the rear of the jacket. There we go. With a little blad on it. Excellent. And these are reminiscent of the works of Michael Coney, if you're wondering. These are the other two I got in that deal. Starship Spring, which has got an excellent jacket. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? And I was very pleased to get these to sort of complete my set. And again, it's got the illustration, but this time with the legend on it, which is quite interesting because with the other sequence, they do them without the legend. There we are. Very handsome. As you see, very brief brevity the soul of good writing very often and um, this is the moving epilogue as it says to the successful starship series starship coda now the telemass quartet has been published as a single omnibus paperback but i don't think that's happened with the starship books and it really doesn't need to happen it is high time that there's a nice retrospective reissue um, program for eric's work because it is great fun it's great reads and i'd rather read these and things like hamilton or reynolds when i'm in the mood for sort of space opera type things i do like it quite light i have to be quite honest and i like the pastoral approach so there you see again no legend so there is some inconsistency around the series and um often this wraparound art that's not that's slightly different very very interesting stuff but yeah um ps and new con do lovely stuff so it's just one new con book in there and i think that's about the only time this that's ever happened so there we go so that's another couple of gaps three gaps filled and i've got quite a bit of eric's works to read now which i didn't have before which i'm very pleased about stop press moment one more thing that i'd almost forgotten because of course i'm surrounded by books as you can see this is something I got gratis from my editor at Deep Ends, Rick McGrath of Terminal Press. And this is the new anthology that he's produced this year, Unauthorised Departures, which, as you can see, is a very handsome laminated boards, large format. This is Royal Unauthorised Departures, Trippy Tales for the Adventurous Mind. And Rick has put this together and I was supposed to have a novella in here. But because I haven't been well, because I was too busy doing YouTube, I couldn't get it together. So there'll be another um, another anthology next year from Terminal Press. And hopefully I should be in that one. I need to start writing now, really. To actually squeeze it in. And who's in this? All sorts of people. Maxim Jakubowski, wonderful crime writer, SF anthologist, bookseller. He's just like a total genius. And um, he's been around a long time. Great guy. And you'll see him in the Ballard multi-anthology signing video from last november there's also d harlan wilson who's a friend of a friend he's a friend of my mate james reich and harlan d harlan what is he he issues books um anti-oedipus press they do barry milesburg books which are fantastic really really good who else is in here jim goddard james goddard of leaky wood press and Carasina, my good friend hi jim who is you know one of those wonderful human beings out there in the SF community? David Quantic, who's a very famous TV writer, writes books as well. He's also in that video I referred to. Somebody who's also in here who was in that video and I hadn't met before is um, Andrew Hook, who I'm in the sort of process of getting to know through social media. And I've got a book of Andrews in work, which I'm going to buy us in my stash of things to be bought, which looks excellent. And I'm going to tell you about that. When I read that, I'll do a review of it. So, but Andrew's really prolific. He does lots of interesting things. We have similar musical tastes, so he's a good guy. Rick McGrath himself, Reese Hughes, Welsh SF author, whose name pops up everywhere. And he's written like hundreds of short stories and lots of other names I don't know. So it's going to be great fun looking through this and reading it. And hopefully the version next year, which is going to be more about arrivals than departures, I think. I should be in that one, fingers crossed. So you can get this online from Amazon, Terminal Press. There'll be lots of great stuff in it, you can bet.
hay on white today. The sun is out. Just sold some books at the cinema bookshop. Have a little tootle around. See what we can pick up. Not really planning to buy anything today, but you never know. It's good to have a look. And I'm kind of in a Nicholas Royal B format 1980s mode at the moment. Pick it those paladins, that sort of thing. thing is for me it's not just the books it's living the life that goes with it you know because it's part of what I do and has been for such a long time so you know you have to embrace it get stuck into it this is the book life and I've shown you the castle before but you know, it wasn't open to the public ever before, and it's so nice to have it open now. It gives an extra dimension to the town. So I guess, really, I should just go and do some book buying. But this is what it's all about, really. It's not just about the books. It's about it being such a big part of life, you know, and it's unavoidable for me. So I guess I've just embraced it from the beginning, and it sort of grows rather than shrinks. It becomes more and more of a part of my life and since I started doing the channel books have become more important and more central and they have taken over a lot from a lot of my other hobbies and things a lot more I still listen to music and watch films and travel and things but you know they really have become really central in a way they weren't for quite a while really I know I complain a lot about hay because it's not what it was, as I keep saying, and it isn't, but I still really love coming here, and would I live here? Yeah, you know, I wouldn't mind, and um, ultimately, really, I'd like my own shop here, but it'll never happen, of course, great shame, because it needs people like me, he said laughingly, and without a trace of modesty. One good thing to do when you're book shopping is turn your phone off otherwise you spend all your time answering calls and text messages just turn it off otherwise you'll never enjoy it as much as you could this is one of the fairly pointless new bookshops opening up in Hay, which is all new stuff which you can get anywhere i really do not see the point of it when you're on a tight time clock having the right sort of shelving and the right organisation is key. Like, just being the Adaman Annex and they've got the new books mixed up, the remainders mixed up with the old books and that really gets me down. I can't be bothered to look. These places are never open. Thankfully, green ink is the real thing. Now regular viewers of the channel will know that whenever I come to Hay on Wye, I go to go in Gay on Wye and it's always closed. I personally think they're all still in the closet. What are they doing? Yes, I'm having lager, okay? 
The thing is, at the moment, I'm actually in the mood for ale, but I can't see anything I like here, and I'm not fussed on the lager in here. You actually can't get a really decent pint of lager in here, so you're just going to have to put up with it. Why am I talking about this? Only a few of you complain about it anyway. Anyway, cheers. One of the rituals when coming back from Hay on Wye, when I'm with the video editor, is to go to Oak Church, the farm shop just outside Hereford. It's a huge edifice of commerciality. So, back from Hay on Wye, just got back, left approximately 7.50 this morning, got back approximately 5 o'clock in the afternoon, time spent in Hay on Wye at three and a half hours, which indicates how long it was on the road. The secret is, if you drive from the west country, the sort of southwest of England, don't go up the Wye Valley, don't go by Herefordshire, go along the M4, then turn off near Cardiff onto the A470 and drive up round to Brecon. That way it's much, much quicker. Can't always get the video editor to do it. Next time it's definitely going to happen. You're stuck behind rural traffic. Coming back was okay. So what did I get? Well, I sold a load of books and made some money. Spent a lot of it there, not on books, on things like having a coffee, having a meal out, which was nice, that sort of thing. So did have some money left and I bought a few things, not a lot. What does one do? Well, what one does, of course, is the secret of not making your TBR ridiculously large is to buy books you've already read. So I saw this in Hay and White Book Centre. And I had to get it because I used to have this edition. This is Herman Hesse, Journey to the East, which is one of his shorter novels. And this is a Grafton edition from the mid 80s. I used to have this very edition. I've got a Pete Rowan edition at the moment, which is a paperback, which is not so good. And this is very much kind of a spiritual fantasy. And I got rid of this. I don't know why, because I kept all my original Hesses apart from this. I'm pleased to have that again. And that was 295, Unbroken Spine. Very, very nice, lovely job. Something I saw in Hay at the cinema bookshop last time I was there. Funnily enough, there are a few copies of Booths as well. Um, and I've got a feeling this might have been Remainder, though it does never remain a stripe on it. It's Drown Tide by Sidney J. Van Skiok. Um, I don't know if that's how you say it. Nobody seems to know. And I just fancy this. And this is like an underwater SF um, book. And I thought I'd have that. Um, three pounds. Nice condition. Got that from a cinema bookshop which is mostly, mostly where I sell my stuff. That's the cinema bookshop there. It's not a bookshop about cinema. It just used to be a cinema once upon a time. They had a lot of Westerns there in the cinema bookshop and they look like this. Lots of Westerns. And I was looking through them, and something I do is I tend to scan um, books at the bottom of the spine for colophons of publishers I'm interested in when I haven't got much time and I've got to look through things quickly. I'm often looking at publisher-focused things, Shades of Jules Bird. And I was going through the Westerns, and then I thought, well, I'm not finding anything from Tandem. Then I decided to check the top of the spine, and of course I came across the familiar Tandem logo. And this is The Good, The Bad and The Ugly by Joe Millard, the dollar westerns, um, in Wyndham at Tandem. I used to have this back in the 70s. Got in my copy a long time ago. I used to have for a few dollars more as well. Never had a fistful of dollars. They had a copy there, but it was an estate. And this was 250 and these are hard to come by now. And this does have some spine rippling there, but it's not leaning, um, and it's pretty good. So I'm looking forward to this. I love the dollar westerns. I've loved them since the 70s. My favourite one is probably the first one, A Fistful of Dollar, because I like that man with no name on his own thing, the existential thing, that this is probably a better made film. I really do go for that loner thing in a big way. So I'm really looking forward to reading this again. And I'm not sure. I know that at least one of them had a different byline, but I'm not sure if they were all written by the same person, whether that was a house name. I'm sure some of you guys will know. I'm not a Western expert. I know more about Westerns as literature than the sort of pop exploitation side, but I'm really pleased to have that because that's the one I had as a kid, which is great. 
Um, one more thing I got in Cinema Bookshop, which I was really pleased to get. Um, it's a Picador. I've got my eyes open for Picadors and Paladins in the moment. But you just see the same old things. Nicholas Royal's got all the good ones. I know Jules Burt is collecting as well. What chance do the rest of us mere mortals have? Well, there you go. And this is something which is really uncommon anyway. It's a real cult book in its day. And this is Peter Carroll Brown's Small Creeps Day in Picador, B format. And this is a kind of dystopian novel, and this inspired Robert Calvert to write a lot of the lyrics on the Hawk Lords album, 25 Years On. Hawk Lords is what Hawkman were briefly called in 1978, and that's an SF concept album. And also the guy from Genesis, Mike Rutherford, did a solo album round about the same time, maybe a bit later, based on this. So it's really good to have this, just uncommon. And I've seen better Picadors, but it's really nice to have this and pick it all the definitive literary B format in Britain. It's got some scoring on the back, but I just wanted to read it really. So there you go. So that's nice to have. I only got one more thing. I did look at a few things, but I didn't really have a lot of time. I was quite flustered, really. It just seemed to flash by and um, I, I really don't know what happened. But it's only a few months since I've been and I was selling rather than buying. Then I decided to pick this up. This is John Sladek, the reproductive system known in the USA as Mechasm. And I've got a Golanx um, SF Masters of this, which I bought back in 86, 87. And I've never had a Panther one. This is a Panther one from the early 80s. Let's have a look. This was 4 95 Let's see, this is the um, 77 printing, actually. And that's which is why it doesn't have Granada on the spine, where it's just Panther. And I got this from Derek Adaman. And you see this book around, but it's usually in the state. But this one's in really, really nice nick. What I'd really like is the panther copy of keep the giraffe burning by john sladek which i had back at the time with a burning giraffe on the cover and it's really really hard to find it full stop and i remember reading it as a kid and i was sort of baffled by it it was absolutely wacky and i'd read philip k dick then but i wasn't ready at that point for sladek's brand of wackiness so that's the mini book haul i think that kind of wraps it up for this collector diary there will be a couple of supplements coming up where I look at completing a collection of an author's work. So there's going to be two of those coming up over the next sort of 10 days or so. Thanks for watching. Best of your own collecting. Don't go mad. Try and stay in control. Find somewhere to offload the stuff you don't want and do your unhaul, as it's laughingly called. The discarded, as Harlan Ellison would say. And I'll leave you to it. Thanks for watching and bye for now.